Hello friends, welcome back to our channel DS Tech Mirror. This is part 4 of our Power App Component Framework series. In today's video, I will cover the solution structure of our PCF project. So let's get started. This is the list of the files which we will get in our PCF project and these are the common files which we will get in all our projects. So I will go through all these files one by one. Let me go to the project which I have created in my last video. So this is the project my first PCF which I have created in my last video and let's go through all these files now one by one. So I'll start from the top. So you could see uh, at the top we have this folder called my first PCF and inside this particular folder we have this file called control manifest dot input dot xml file this is one of the important file in this project and under this folder called generated these are the typing files so you can ignore this file but this is important for us so i will cover this control manifest dot input dot xml so now in this file you will see uh, this file will uh, at the top under manifest there is a node called control under this this node will have all the general information about your project namespace this is what we have given constructor version of your project display name the name which will appear when you will deploy your PCA project description and control type standard this will always remain standard over here the important attribute is the version which you have to update in case you are upgrading your PCF project so other than this nothing important over here you will get all the information by default and whenever you are upgrading your PCA project you have to update your version that's it if you need to update the display name if you want you can do that if you want to update the description you can do it in these two nodes then what we have then we have this another important node over here we have this property node uh, the attributes over here we have this property name so what we can do uh, in this node we can create different properties so whenever we are creating any new property it will appear in the property pane when we will deploy this PCA project we will see how the property pane will appear and again at that time also I will cover this important node but right now for your understanding this is the property node uh, just like in SharePoint we have properties for the web parts or in SharePoint framework uh, project SharePoint framework web parts we have property pane for the PCF also we have property pane so we can define property over here so this is the by default you are getting one property called sample property name we can change again display name a display name of the property description of type is what is the type of your property single line of text whole number decimal number so there are n number of attributes which are supported by for the off type whether it is uh, you know we support it for option sites option set means choices field so all these types of attribute we can give over here then usage is bound so this is uh, one important attribute i will cover required true true means this property is required now usage can have two value usage is equal to bound or usage is equal to input if usage is equal to input that means this property is an input property and this pca project will accept some sort of input from this particular property on which you know our pca project can work on so input means uh, we have to provide the input to our PCF component that input could be hard coded or also that could be the value from any other PCF component present in that uh, in my power apps application. So input is simple another is usage is equal to bound. Now this uh, property bound indicates that the property is bound to a field uh, or attribute of a record in the data source so when we are going to deploy this pca project we are going to add this control to a field because uh, for example we have created this pca project the type is the field we have not created as a data uh, data set we have created uh, as a field so what we have to do we are going to bind that uh, this control with a field which is present in my form in a model driven app so this indicates that the property is bound to a field that, that means the property value will be stored and retrieved the, what does that mean so for example i have created an input box so in, in uh, custom input box using this pcf then user is going to input any control uh, any value over there uh, and when that end user is going to save that record so that property values is also going to get saved and whenever user is going to open that particular record this property value is also going to get 
retrieved so user bound means bound uh, so if you are getting confused you can keep it simple bound means this is binded to a particular field and its value is going to be set and retrieved along with the record record you can accept for example we have one dataverse table and we have created a form uh, with the help of that uh, dataverse table now i have saved one record in that for example employee record so that is one record now in that form i have one custom control that is a bound type it is a text box so when user will save the value it will get saved and when user is going to view that record value will get retrieved so that means bound and input means only it will take the input my pcf component or my pcf control will accept an input it, that could be a hard code input or that could be input from other components or other fields in the in my power as application so in simple word this is property and by default this uh, we got one property we can create more property under this node then we have this resources this is pretty simple it is showing the code path is index.ts file and if you are creating any css file then we can give over here css path and all these kind of resources uh, we can give under this resources node so this is my control uh, manifest file uh, so if i have to do a quick recap when i have control node property node and resources node control node will give you general information and you have to update the version whenever you are upgrading your pcf project property node uh, will have property so it will be a two type bound and input input means pcf will accept a input property it could be hard coded or from other components or other controls in your application bound means it is connected to a field simple and resources all the resources uh, entry you can do it under resources tab so this is about my control manifest file then over here you could see i by default it is mentioned code and path is index.ts file so this is my index.ts file this is the entry point of my pcf project so by default we are getting this code which would be the life cycle of this pcf project which i will cover in my next video in my next video i will cover what all are these methods i need update view get output and destroy and uh, how we are going to manipulate all this code in this particular file under life cycle next i have this node modules folder so whatever the dependencies we are you know installing for this pcf project will get uh, downloaded under this folder will get stored under this folder called node underscore modules if you remember when we were creating this project after the project got created we ran a command called npm install so it installed some kind of dependencies which is required for this particular node project that is pcf project and all those dependencies are stored under this node modules folder next file i have dot eslintrc.json file so you are not going to interact much with this file because this is the file which is required by uh, eslint this is the eslint configuration file and what is eslint so eslint is going to you know force your project is going to force you to follow certain kind of coding standards and it is going to uh, the all the rules which we are which we need for the coding standards are defined in this particular file so this file may vary from organization to organization based on the coding standard which they uh, uh, you know wanted to implement for their clients so this is that file so hardly you are going to interact with it in case uh, because uh, if you are going to define certain rules for eslint then only you are going to work with this particular file then i have these three files which are pretty important package log.json file package.json file then pcf config.json file so first i'll start with this package.json file so if i open this file package.json file you could see i have the general information name version scripts dependencies and dev dependencies so these two are important so what happens whenever you know i am installing anything any kind of dependencies i am installing the uh, the moment i will install a uh, entry is going to come under these two attributes whether uh, it will come under depend, uh, dependencies or dev dependencies for example if i am running a command called npm install react so automatically there you would see a new entry under dependencies and if i am running a command called npm install react hyphen hyphen save hyphen dev 
then it will come under dev dependency so when you know we will start working on this project we will install certain type of dependencies at that time also i will cover this for now you will you could understand all the kind of you know installation we are doing our dependencies which are required for this project an entry will be made under these two attributes the moment you will run the commands now why we need this package.json file and what is the difference between dev dependencies and dependencies so dependency means all the you know all the things which are required for this project to work in the production environment will be uh, marked under dependencies and any kind of uh, you know installations or dependencies which are required for the development purpose only not in the production requirement that will come under dev dependencies for example we are installing a file for the testing purpose so that is not required for a project to run in the production environment so all these kind of entries will come under dev dependencies you could see some example over here you could see this eslint eslint as i said is for the uh, coding standards and other things so that is not required for my project to run in the production environment so all these entries will come under dev dependencies now why i need this package.json file so you know what will happen you can understand in such a way i will try to make it simple for you guys see if you go to this particular project now and if i try to go to reveal in file explorer so this is my project so most of the size will be taken by this node modules folder so whenever we are moving our you know project from one environment to another environment or if we are sharing this code with, between the different developers we cannot or it is not recommended to share along with this node modules folder which contains all our dependencies because this is very huge and it will make our package uh, very bulky so what we do generally do we delete this node modules folder and then then we share a package file so another developer who wants to you know continue uh the development in their development machines first need the dependencies uh whatever the dependencies are required for this particular project otherwise they will get various errors for example i have created this component using react and now my react is installed in this node modules folder but i have deleted it so the moment uh, another developer will start working on this particular project it will get all the errors for the react so how the another developer knows what all the dependencies are required for this particular project so in such cases uh, package.json comes into picture so what the another developer will do they will open this project and will simply install and will simply run npm i or npm install what npm install will do it will scan this package.json file and will install all the dev dependencies and dependencies and your project will start running successfully so this is the use of package.json file what is this package-log.json file is you could see different dependencies have different versions now for example over here i have used uh, react version as 16.8 and i am working in this project for almost 6 months and then i shared this file with someone else now uh, the, another developer run npm install and by that time another version of react is there so what by default it will do it will take the updated version which could be uh, anything at that time and because of that uh, another developer could face certain issues because of the new version of react or because of the version mismatch to overcome uh, this issue we have this file called package dot package hyphen log dot json file what it will do it will automatically log the dependency versions all the versions will get logged and all the developers will have the same version for all the dependencies file this file is automatically generated and it is not recommended to make any alteration in this you can leave this file as it is it is just to log the version of your dependencies so that all the developers and everyone is working with the same version so this is the meaning of uh, package json and package hyphen log dot json next we have this file called pcf config dot json file so again this is the configuration file for this pcf project and over here you could see this out directory and it is saying uh, create a folder called out under that control so the moment i will build this project you will see it will create a folder called out and inside that it will create a folder called control so in simple word this is nothing it's just the configuration file which will be used by our pcf 
project just like we have different configuration file we have configuration file for json so all the json files are the configuration files and and there's no need to make any alterations in these files tcs config file is the configuration file for our typescript project again no need to uh, change anything in this or update anything in this so at a high level this is the solution structure of my uh, pcf project and I would say before you know we start any development, any custom development, it is always recommended or it's always a good practice to understand your solution structure and then proceed with the development. Now let's see if I have covered everything from my slide. So guys, I have covered index.ts file. This is the entry point for our project and all the default code in this project come under the life cycle of PCF project, which I will cover in my next video control manifest file this is the file which will contain the version of your project or property and other information node modules folder will install all the dependencies package.json just now i have explained package.json and package lock this will lock your uh, the version of all the dependencies this will have the dev and the uh, dependencies and the dev dependencies pcf config this is the configuration file for the pcf project Right now it has only one location that is uh, it will create one it has mentioned that you have to create one out folder and under that you have to create the uh, control folder which I know it will create the moment I will build this project and we will see in our upcoming videos. This is the configuration file for the TypeScript and I have covered one more file which is not mentioned over here that is the .eslint rc dot .eslint rc dot json file which is the configuration file for the eslint. And what is ESLint? ESLint is nothing. It provides a wide range of rules and configuration options to ensure some you know, consistency and maintainability of your coding standards. That's it for today's video. In my next video, I will cover life cycle of a PCA project. Thank you for watching this video. If you like this video, please like and share the video and subscribe to the channel to get notification for our upcoming videos. Till our next video, much love. Keep learning. Thank you.